Hello friends, my name is Akshans and welcome to CAD Academy. In this lecture, we will study the amplitude modulation. We will study all the types of amplitude modulation like double sideband with full carrier, double sideband suppressed carrier, single sideband and vestigial sideband also. Okay, so let's start with the double sideband. Full carrier okay this is commonly known as a m okay the now the time domain equation for the dsbfc is s of t that is equal to carrier plus K A M T into carrier. So this is the time domain equation for the T S B with full carrier. Now we will write it like we have carrier as A C. A C is the amplitude of carrier signal and carrier signal is a sinusoidal signal we will represent that by cos and 2 pi fc t okay now fc is the carrier frequency now writing the ka and what is the message signal here am cos 2 pi f m t where am is the where am is the amplitude of message signal and fm is the frequency of message signal now this carrier that will be ac cos 2 pi fc t okay so this is the so this is the equation now we will solve it this term will as it is be here and now plus now here we have three things like k a a m and a c we will write these things so we will write like a c k a a m okay now what is left here cos 2 pi f c t this term this term and in multiplication with cos 2 pi fm t okay this term now we have this equation now we know that cos a cos b okay 2 cos a cos b is equal to cos a plus b plus cos a minus b this is the important equation which you have to learn and will be very useful in whole communication system now solving this equation by using this formula okay so now the equation becomes ac cos 2 pi fc t plus this term as it is here okay plus ac and this k a a m is known as the modulation index and represented by the mu okay so this k a m is mu and we will write here okay now inside we have cos 2 pi f c t cos 2 pi f m t now we will multiply here now we will multiply here with 2 and divide this equation by 2 so we will have here 2 and here we will have cos 2 pi fct 
cos 2 pi fmt right okay now now we will solve this equation now we will solve this equation okay now writing this same term again ac cos 2 pi fct okay plus ac mu by 2 into we know that 2 cos a cos b is cos a like fc cos a plus b plus cos a minus b so so this is what we got here now now we will take this 2 pi and t common okay from both terms so we will have the last simplified equation as ac cos 2 pi fct plus ac mu by 2 here here we will have cos 2 pi fct fc plus fmt and here we will have cos 2 pi fc minus fmt so now we will give a final touch to this equation we will write this term as it is here ac cos 2 pi fct plus here we will multiply this term with this term and this term also and eliminate the bracket so here we have ac mu by 2 and cos 2 pi fc plus fm t okay plus ac mu by 2 cos 2 pi fc minus fm t okay so this is the final equation for the double sideband full carrier and commonly known as amplitude modulation so this is the final equation and now this is the final equation and with only this equation we will get both double sideband suppressed carrier and also the single sideband so when we eliminate this term then we don't have any carrier here okay this is just the carrier so when we eliminate this term we are left with these two things okay these both are the side bands these both are called as the side bands where we have fc plus fm that is called as the upper side band okay and where we have fc minus fm that is called as the lower side band okay so when we eliminate this term we get as we get this signal and this signal is what double side band suppressed carrier because we have eliminated the carrier now when we have when we are left with this thing okay and uh, we have upper side band and lower side band when we eliminate any of the side band either this lsb or or we eliminate this usb we get with only one side band with this one or with this one only then that is called as the single side band okay
we'll see the generation of dsb fc suppressed carrier and uh, uh, single sideband in next lecture now we are deriving the equations for that now we have derived the equation for double sideband and uh, and uh, we will see all the cases all the amplitude modulations type with this equation only now first to draw the spectrum for this signal okay and uh, this axis is frequency axis and this axis is for the magnitude okay now we will get the Fourier transform of this signal we will get the Fourier transform of this signal if you don't know the Fourier transform of this signal and then no problem just we need to know is that Fourier transform of cos 2 pi f t is okay here we have magnitude of 1 here now for your transform of this signal is we are writing it in graphical way because we have to represent in a spectrum so this is we get an impulse function okay while getting the Fourier transform of cos 2 pi ft we get impulse function and first impulse function is at minus f and f is this frequency okay and we get an another impulse function that is at f okay and the amplitude is this is one here we get here what one by two so amplitude is divided by two location of the impulse is minus f and f now we will apply this same rule in in this equation okay so now we have here we have ac cos 2 pi fct so what will happen that we will get an impulse at minus fc and plus fc okay so this is the location fc and this is the location minus fc okay now this term has been represented in the spectrum we have this term so what will happen here that here what is the frequency fc plus fm so we will get to uh, impulse at minus fc plus fm okay minus fc plus fm and uh, and uh, at fc plus fm okay these two impulse we will get by this term okay now what will be the amplitude for this one so for this one amplitude will be ac mu by 4 because we have here ac mu by 2 we will divide this thing by 2 so we will get what ac mu by 4 this amplitude will also be ac mu by 4 i am not writing that again now what will be the amplitude for this carrier one so the amplitude for this one will be ac by 2 because we have here ac so while dividing this by 2 we will get what ac by 2 so this will also be ac by this will also be ac by 2 so i'm not writing that again now we are left with the third term this term for this term we will divide this by 2 we will get ac mu by 4 as the amplitude of the impulse function and the impulse function's location will be what fc minus fm so this is what this is what fc minus fm the amplitude is again ac mu by 4 okay and we will get the impulse at minus of fc minus fm 
okay okay minus of fc minus fm and the amplitude will be what ac mu by 4 so this is the spectrum for double sideband full carrier now we will draw the spectrum for single sideband and we will see the time domain equation for single sideband okay so as i have told you that in single sideband we don't have any carrier so we will eliminate this carrier okay we are left with the two terms which are what side bands okay i will write this part this brown part again this will be what double side band suppressed carrier okay we have what ac mu by 2 here cos 2 pi fc plus fm t plus ac mu by 2 cos 2 pi fc minus fm t this is lower side band and this one is upper side band okay now we will represent this we have seen that how to represent the signal in the frequency domain so this is the magnitude axis and this is the frequency axis for the first term we will get what ac mu by 4 and the location will be what fc plus fm and negative of that okay and same at the positive frequency the location will be what fc plus fm and the amplitude will be what ac mu by 4 okay so this is for the first term for the second term what will happen that we will get the impulse of same amplitude that will be what ac mu by 4 because we have the amplitude there that is what we have amplitude of sideband as ac mu by 2 okay now here we have what fc minus fm okay at the negative frequency we will get what that location will be what fc minus fm minus okay now that will be what the amplitude will be what ac mu by 4 again so this is the frequency spectrum for the double sideband suppressed carrier now i have told you that when we eliminate any of the sideband like we eliminate this upper sideband then we are left with the lower sideband and that will be what single sideband okay or either either we have eliminated the lower sideband and we are left with only one sideband that is upper sideband that is also called as the single sideband okay so the time domain equation for the single sideband becomes becomes as ac mu by 2 cos 2 pi fc plus fm or fc minus fmt okay so this is the equation for for single side band now we will represent this so for single side band we have representation as if we are considering the upper side band then this location will be what fc plus fm and the same thing this side also because the frequency spectrum is always the even function okay always the even function so this is when we are considering the upper sideband only okay upper sideband when we are considering the lower sideband then we have what the location of the impulse function will be at fc minus fm and minus of fc minus fm okay now this amplitude will be ac mu by 
4 in this case and in this case that will also be C. that will also ac mu by 4 so this is for lower side band okay so this is what we call as single side band modulation technique now we will see the now we will see the vestigial side band vestigial side band okay that is what vestigial side vestigial side band okay so what happens in vestigial side band let's understand that by we'll understand that by the spectrum analysis okay so let's consider we have uh, we have taken the we have taken the upper side band of the single side band modulation technique and uh, we have this thing okay we have this thing and this thing okay generally signal for the am signal is represented like this and this will be the carrier okay both side this side also okay when we have when we are talking about the when we are talking about the double side band suppressed carrier then we represent it like this and uh, when we are talking about the single side band we represent it like this or we represent it like this for lower side band and for like this for upper side band okay so now we are taking upper side band here now what will happen that this frequency will be fc this frequency will be fc plus fm okay now now at the receiver to get this signal exactly from here to here we need a filter this should be the band pass region band pass region to get this signal okay we cannot make a filter having this sharp having this sharp edge of the band pass region okay when we are talking about the low pass filter it passes the low frequency so this is the this is the pass region low pass region for the low pass filter okay in reality in practical we get a system like this okay having the pass region like this uh, similarly when we are considering the high pass filter we get we get the pass region like this similarly when we are considering the band pass filter for the band pass filter we get what like this okay we cannot get this one transfer region for the filter so what we do is so what we do is we take it like this we take the upper side band like this and we this frequency is fc fc minus delta f okay what is happened here that now when we have to receive this signal then then that system having the transfer function like this then also we can achieve this signal very easily without losing the more bandwidth okay so this is the spectrum representation for the vestigial side band okay so similarly this side here also the magnitude for the frequency spectrum is always a even function so at this side also we will get the 
same thing okay this will be what negative of fc minus delta f and this will be fc this will be fc plus fm and negative of that so this is the spectrum representation for the vestigial sideband okay one more thing here like uh, here the region occupied by the spectrum is what from here to here we have what fm length okay and from here to here we have what delta f because this is this location is what fc minus delta f this is fc plus fm so the bandwidth will be what from here to here that will be the bandwidth and that bandwidth will be what delta f plus fm okay so this will be the bandwidth now we will talk about the bandwidth of all the four signals starting with the dsb fc so what we had in spectrum of dsb fc we had this as fc plus fm and this was what fc minus fm and this was fc so from here to here okay so from here to here what is the reason occupied by the signal is this length is fm okay from here to here this is fm and from here to here this is also fm so fm and fm the bandwidth becomes 2 fm okay so for ds b dsb fc the bandwidth is 2 fm okay now in dsb sc when we uh, suppress the carrier what happens that the carrier is just removed okay the carrier is just removed then what we have the width of the spectrum is not changed then the bandwidth is, is still the 2 fm so for dsb sc the bandwidth is, is still twice of the message frequency okay now in single sideband what happens that we eliminate the one sideband okay we eliminate the one sideband and the spectrum was like this one okay like this is the upper sideband here okay or lower sideband we can take upper sideband or lower sideband here so the frequency occupied by the signal is just fm so the bandwidth for the single sideband is what fm only okay and as i have told you in vsv vestigial sideband what we have the bandwidth as fm plus that small frequency that was what delta f okay and where delta f was less than very less than carrier frequency and delta f was less than fm okay now this was the time domain equation and the spectrum representation for all the four types of amplitude modulation techniques and uh, we have talked about the bandwidth also now in the next lecture we will study the generation and the demodulation of all the four types of amplitude modulation techniques okay okay so please hit the subscribe button and see you guys in the next lecture